That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Witches, the remake of the 1990 Nicholas Rowe film, which of course is based on the 1983 Roald Dahl children's novel. Uh, Robert Zemeckis has directed the new version, which uh, will premiere October 23rd, 2020 on HBO Max. So, if you're a fan of the 1990 film, you should definitely watch it. Yes. And if you read the book, of course, you'd want to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, I know people who are fans of the 1990 version, like myself, were very concerned about who would play uh, the Grand High Witch. Mm -hmm. And we got Anne Hathaway. Yep, that's who we got. So straight out the gate, I'll say, I think she did what they asked her to do. So... Yes. Uh, That's good enough, right? I, I think she's obviously having fun yeah. with it uh, and all the bells and whistles of the uh, CGI effects and uh, voice makeover that assist her. That assist her. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to say that I still wouldn't have wished someone older. Well, we'll talk about okay. that. All right. Okay, so if you don't know the story, this is the story. A young boy... Well, keep in mind, the original 1983 novel is uh, set between uh, Britain and Norway, uh, so the Nicholas Rogues version kind of more fits that, so this version... Is different. Yes. In this version, we find a young boy whose mother and father have died, so he goes off to live with, live with his grandmother in Alabama. It's 1968. His grandmother's played by Octavia Spencer. Uh -huh. The voiceover uh, is done by Chris Rock, and Chris Rock represents the young boy. The boy doesn't appear to have a name, so we're just going to call him the boy. Uh -huh. um, so he is having a, a, a nice life with his grandmother. They're getting along well. They're at the general store one day, and the boy has an interesting encounter with a woman who appears to be a witch. He's freaked out. When he gets home, he tells his grandmother what happened, and she's like, boy, what you saw was a witch. Let me tell you all about it. Mm -hmm. So she relays a story about the first time she ever saw a witch, do witch things, and then she says, we have to go. Like, well, because uh, she saw a witch, what, which was Anne, which, a witch, which was Anne Hathaway, took her friend, Alice. Yeah, many decades prior. So she's like, we have to go. I have a cousin or a nephew, someone who works at a very fancy hotel. He can get us a reservation and we'll just go there. The witches will never find us there. So they get to the fancy hotel and of course the witches um, have a, con a conference there. So they are meeting. So the witches don't like children, hate, hate children. Their entire mission is to like eradicate children. So the conference these witches are having is basically to talk about how they can get rid of all children. And they're going to do that by building candy stores, giving kids candy that is laced with a potion that will turn them into mice. Mm -hmm. So while the witches are having this conference, the boy, who happens to also have a pet mouse, um, kind of like is hiding out in there because he wasn't supposed to be in this room and then he heard people coming in so he hid. So he's hearing all of this. He sees the women transform into witches. So he knows what's up. Then as a demonstration of the potion, the boy had made a friend, this little chubby British boy. Bruno. Bruno. Uh, so poor little stupid Bruno um, got caught up with these witches and they told him, oh, at this time, come to the conference room and we'll give you a bunch of chocolate. So his fat ass shows up. He gets turned into a mouse. The boy sees his friend turn into a mouse. He is able to... Um, he's not... Uh, the boy is still in the conference room and is not able to escape, so he gets turned into a mouse as well. Mm -hmm. So it's the boy, Bruno. We also find out that the boy's pet mouse... Daisy. Daisy was also a young like a human who had been turned into a mouse by a witch. And that Daisy character is uh, voiced by Kristen Chenoweth. Mm -hmm. So the three of them are now mice. They go to find Grandma. The mice can speak, so they tell Grandma, like, this is what happened to us. She already believes in witches, so she's like, got it. This is what we need to do. Uh -huh. The Grandma relays that she's kind of like, she's kind of into like voodoo slash like natural medicine, but she's like a good a good witch. A good witch. Are you a good witch? So she's like, step one, we need to find like the antidote for this potion. And she tries, but she's not successful. So she's like, well, I guess you're stuck. The next best thing, we need to destroy all of the potion. So, like, just wrapping this up, they end up, the, the witches are having dinner, and one of the mice 
puts potion into the soup the witches are being served. So all these witches eat the soup that has the potion that will turn them all into mice, except the Grand High Witch, mm -hmm. Anne Hathaway's character. So while all these witches are turning into mice, Grandma was able to get a key to the Grand High Witch's room because she wants to find the potion. Also, the Grand High Witch has a bunch of cash in there mm -hmm. because that's, she was going to disseminate it to allow the other witches to buy candy stores. Mm -hmm. So while Grandma's up there dumping potion and stealing cash, the Grand High Witch comes and they have a showdown, which results in the mice feeding the witch the potion. She turns into a big old rat that looks a lot like our cat Aggie. Wow. Um, <laughs> the end. So the, the grandma is able to go back home with a bunch of cash and all the secrets and the potions. And her mission now with all that money is to basically be a witch hunter. She also procured a, like, a, uh, like a black book that has the names and addresses of all the witches in the country. So she's just going to go around killing witches. We also see... So Chris Rock, who's still narrating, we see him at the end as like an old mouse, and he's teaching kids how to like detect and destroy witches. Yeah, which is like sometime in the mid to late seventies. Right. From the end. All oh. right. Um, should I quickly go over my notes? Yeah. The opening of this film, like before, we're introduced to the first witch in the general store. There's a lot of music. There's like a succession of three different. Popular R&B songs of the late 60s because uh, Octavia Spencer's character likes music and it's kind of a, seen as a way to get uh, her grandson out of his shell. Yeah. Um, I guess it makes sense, but it also is a little great. It was like, a lot. Just pick one. Just yeah. pick one. But I thought a good um, line addressing race was when the grandma says, like, the witches only prey on the poor. So, like, black kids, she says people, kids who no one would uh, care if they were missing. So that's why we're going to go to this rich white hotel, because the witches would never be there. Right. So I, I, I appreciated that little, like, Well, I think that's, that's actually the best uh, part of this new version is the, the, the putting some subtext in there, if you're going to set it in the United States, in the Deep South of the late 60s. Uh, yeah, I would expect that to be. Also, uh, besides Zemeckis, the script was written by Guillermo del Toro and Kenny Barris. That's right. So, you know, the 1990 version, I think, is an excellent movie. We reviewed it, and yeah. I think we gave it four out of five stars. Oh, uh, yeah, because Warner Brothers Archives. I'll post a link below to that review, but that movie's pretty damn like excellent so you know when you remake something like that that isn't even that old i mean the visual like the practical effects look great even the uh like cgi of the mice in the 90 version look really good i, I agree and then you just can't top angelica you can't houston. top angelica houston who was as i understand it you know, again in that time period there were a ton of women that were considered for that role including sigourney Weaver. of course um, who I think would have done a fine job this time around too, or even bring Angelica back. Uh, but you just can't top that Russian severe look of severity that she has. Maybe even it could be a bit German. I, to me, the rich, the witches in that black book read as Nazis, kind of. Um, the reason I brought that up is because I think to to do a remake in twenty twenty, I feel like the visual effects need to be like super on point. Yeah. And I don't think they were, like, I think it was like 80%. So my main gripe was the cat. So the Grand High Witch's cat, to me, looked no... I, I think the cat from that 90s show, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, looked better. It, and he's also, the cat is also not featured so much that you couldn't have used a real black cat. Right, it doesn't do anything, like, Except for remarkable. The, uh, there, you know, it has a couple of reaction shots to end yeah. that way that... that wouldn't that have been cheaper in the long run? Um, I guess getting back to what you were about to talk about is who um, would have been better. I think, I don't know. I don't know who the audience was. We were talking about it. So in 1990, the audience, because it was like a YA novel, so like maybe teenagers would have been into it. So this version, like people my age probably would be really interested in seeing it. So I think Anne Hathaway is an interesting choice because I would have preferred someone more mature and a little more like a diva. Or even, you know, I think Ava Green, I think would have been great, but and she's on even on the younger side of what I would have preferred. Um, but also, um, 
Roald Dahl, the, as a child in 1992, I was reading like V.C. Andrews and Stephen King, and the, li the librarian, I remember the, explicit, the, the exact moment when she let me into the YA part of the elementary library, and I picked up The Witches, probably because the title was taboo, uh, based on my upbringing. And I remember experiencing all of Roald Dahl's books at that time as he wrote for children, some pieces of literature, uh, but they weren't escapism. They, they were for children and depicting the perils of the adult world they lived in and the, the, the ensuing traumas with them. That's, that's what I think of the witches. And that's why you see it as children, the 1990 version, and it's scary. So the biggest difference between the 90 and this version as it pertains to the witches' appearance is that in the 90 version, the witches, like when they remove their wigs, they have like a different form as a head, mm -hmm. right? Their heads are bigger, they're misshapen, they have like really large witch features. But in this version, they just look like bald bitches with like psoriasis on their scalp. And like, and Anne Hathaway's biggest thing is she has like a mouth like the Joker. Mm -hmm. So when she's looking like her human form, she has a scar on her face. And then when she's like in her true form, her it's mouth opens really wide. It's unhinged, like reptilian. I, I thought it looked cartoonish. I even said I thought uh, The Mask from 1994. The, the Jim, Jim Carrey film. The Jim Carrey film. I thought like his effects for his mask looked better than... Anne Hathaway's... Well, so Zemeckis did Death Becomes Her. So th that's what I was hoping this would be in the vein of, because I really haven't cared for his last couple of features. Um, and it kind of has that camp quality, not, not to the same degree, though. Um, the one thing I was going to say that I do appreciate about the differences in the um, sort of styling of the witches is they all have, like like misshapen hands and feet mm -hmm. so like Anne Hathaway when she takes off her gloves has like three fingers on each hand and then each toe each foot has one toe one long toe one long toe and that toenail is painted and then her high heels are beautiful and the the toe section of it is really long to accommodate so I thought the styling of and particularly Anne Hathaway is very good because she's wearing like in her main scene in the conference room she's wearing a beautifully fitted gown and sort of the like, the applique on it is like a like a living snake. Mm -hmm. I thought that looked really good. Is so look in those ways, it benefits from modern technology. And her physicality, I think, because she was walking like a bird, like the big toed birds. <laughs> yes. So that worked well for me. She yeah, she's obviously giving it her all. I, I also think. thought it was fun. The witches clap like this. Yes. So you just hear like very light of. Uh, Applause. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, there, there were elements I like. I, you know, I, I think Octavia Spencer really walks away with the show, though. Uh, that was my next note. When Octavia first meets uh, the Grand High Witch, like when she, uh, she crochets, like Octavia's character, Grandma crochets a sock to lower uh, the boy mouse down to Anne Hathaway's suite because she drops... What is she trying to get? The, They're trying to get the potion because the potion. That's the point where they want it so she can see she can create an antidote. Right, and then the witch catches the the sock, not knowing that there's like the boy in it, and the exchange they have, I thought was really fun. Mm -hmm. But it just showed like Octavia really is like the star of this movie. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in the original, the grandmother's played by Mai Zetterling, who's a famous famous Swedish actress. Uh, I feel like Octavia gets a lot more space. Uh, to, to move around and be lively, and um, I, I think I was entertained every time she was on screen. Oh, 100%. With the faces and... Like, the line delivery. Um, <laughs> she's just really good. I would watch this film again just to see her. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, my next note is Kristen Chenoweth as Daisy was very interesting to me because I, I, I mean, I know Chris Rock is narrating the boy mouse as he's older. Mm -hmm. So obviously their voices change as they get older as after they've been turned into mice. So it's believable that Daisy would be, you know, had she been converted when she was a young girl, she would sound like Kristen Chenoweth now. Uh -huh. Cause that Daisy sounds like a mature woman. Yes. <laughs> but I just thought that was kind of off. I kind of wanted Daisy to sound like a, like a young girl, like the Bruno and the boy. Mm -hmm. Not that it doesn't make sense. It would, How do you feel about Kristen Chenoweth? I, I thought she's kind of distracting because she, she has a very distinct voice. And it's a very um, distinct voice. And I also thought Chris Rock's voice was kind of distracting. 
<laughs> sure, um, but it, it, his didn't bother me. It, she, I, she didn't bother me either. I just, I, I think I just found her distracting, like every time she speaks. And and then the dialogue that Mouse is given isn't particularly enthralling either. Um, Something I didn't understand in the scene where the witches are having dinner and they're all turned into mice. So they're kind of all turning into mice, um, you know, not in unison. So it's like, oh, the witch who was sitting next to me turns into a mouse, and now I'm scared of the mouse. I didn't understand that. Like, the way the witches were reacting to the mice... They were beating the mice. It, it, it seemed really odd. Like, they didn't know that those mice were their, like, uh, colleagues or... <laughs> I don't know. Um, or that they'd have... An, um, there could be a drinking game every time uh, Anne Hathaway's character says the word stupid. <laughs> She says this so many times. Um, and poor Stanley Tucci, who's the um, the hotel, the, the Rowan manager, the manager, yeah. he, which was played by Rowan Atkinson in the original. He had a lot less to do. And it's kind of a reunion between them because they were in Devil Wears Prada together. Oh sure. Um, yeah, he doesn't have much to. He do. doesn't have much to do. Um, what? Oh. I was gonna say that. It, it, it is more or less what I expected, but we, you have to keep in mind Nicholas Rogue adapt, or was the original adapter of this, who's a you know, master auteur filmmaker who directed you know, Walk About, Don't Look Now, um, performance with Mick Jagger. Uh, it, I feel like there's nobody kind of beating the, the visionary minds of Roald Dahl and Nicholas Rogue meeting together. Um, My final note is when Anne Hathaway when her characters turned into that rat, I thought that she, like her, her voice work was more interesting as the rat than as herself. Yeah, I wanted to see more of her as the rat, yeah. uh, which with the special effects there are quite good, I thought. Um, My final thought is uh, that if you are not familiar with this book or the movie, I would, like if you do choose to watch the 2020 version, you have to watch the 1990 version. Oh yeah, version. for sure, for sure. And my vote would be that the 1990 version is significantly better. I agree. And you know, anytime anything's remade, it, it automatically drives uh, a certain percentage of people back to the original source material anyway. Which is good. Uh, her, Anne Hathaway's accent was, it wasn't all over the place, but I couldn't quite tell if what she was trying to do. Her introduction with Stanley Tucci, I thought she was maybe going for a Zsa Zsa Gabor. Um, the, I, I, yeah, I Euro. also thought it was like Zsa Zsa Gabor mixed with Melania Trump. Yeah, because yeah. she does this thing where she can't quite remember his name, which was, of course, a, a Zsa Zsa tactic. Uh, I also thought it was interesting that Octavia gets a line where she, blah, 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 much like that becomes her, which I have to write, your butt ugly witch talk. What would you give this movie? Um, I would give it three out of five. I would give it three out of five, but um, I would give Octavia like four out of five. Oh, she yeah, was sure. very entertaining. I would definitely recommend watching this movie. Um, you know, Del Toro and Alfonso Cuaron uh, produced it. I just can't help but think, because all of Zemeckis' uh, behind the scenes people are there. Don Burgess is cinematographer and uh, Alan Silvestri is the composer. And I can't help but wonder what it would have looked like with somebody a little weirder uh, that was at the helm. But Yeah. Anything else? No, that's it. Bye. Bye. Thank you.